It was this open thing, good, bad, whatever your habits are, they're going to have a consequence. And then, you know, the whole point of, of examining somebody's, yeah, and I don't want to talk about 12 step, but anybody who examines their life and what they do on a regular basis will start to make the connections where a lot of times we're, we're not even conscious uh, of why we do the things we do. All right, everybody, fair warning. We're doing things different on this one. Actually, let me start from the beginning. If you are hearing this, you have once again tuned in the Consequence of Heaven podcast. This is your host, JT. Actually, that's a lie. I'm not the host of this one. This week, that spot will be filled by Anthony Palmer. He's a producer of this show. He's going to be the one doing all the, uh, all the question asking. I'm going to be in the hot seat. So the goal of this episode being number 75, which for whatever reason feels like a big deal to me, uh, is to give, well, two things. It's going to give a brief history of my story, how it's morphed into uh, into a podcast, which then morphed into a nonprofit and how it became much bigger than me. Uh, more importantly, it's really about t- talking about the future. The programs that we've got coming up, um, some exciting news, just just where the hell this thing's going. So a huge thank you to Anthony Palmer for, for coming up with this idea and just doing an amazing job. All right, hold that thought. This next message goes out to all my beer snobs out there. If you're listening to this and you enjoy a high-quality beer, I don't care what kind of beer it is. It could be a light beer. It could be an IPA. It could be stout, porters, whatever it is. And I want to ask yourself, has my love of really good beer been the root cause of feeling like crap the next day? I'm not talking about completely hungry. Maybe just, maybe just a little under the weather. I got the solution. Check out athleticbrewing.com. These guys are making the finest quality craft beers out there. They just don't have that poison in them. So whether you're just trying to show up as a parent, as an employee at a sporting event, whatever it is, you just want to be clear-headed. Or maybe like me, you just want to be sober. Well, then do yourself a favor. Go to athleticbrewing.com. Use the promo code capital COH20, and you're going to get 20% off your first order. So without further ado, please welcome to the podcast, me. All right, Brother JT. Well, um, man, it is... Uh... It's a little wild being on this side of the mic on your show, but I appreciate the opportunity to get to talk with you today, man. This is cool, dude. It's it's wilder for me. I, I promise. <laughs> I, I promise you that. Uh, it's and at the same time somewhat relaxing, right? Like to 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 be the person asking, <clears throat> excuse me, asking the questions is it's not as easy. So to to sit back and just answer is it's much much simpler. Well, I promise to play nice as best I can. So. <laughs> Well, so we we kind of came to this idea together, man, a little bit. We were, um, you know, as as some of your listeners know, and obviously, as you know, I've been helping you out with the production side of your show here for the last couple months, and um, you're just killing it with the conversations conversations that you're having, and um, have really gotten to talk to some very unique guests. And as you've been doing that, and we've been watching your listenership grow, and we've been watching Consequence of Habit as from its 501c3 side grow. Um, we thought this might be a good time to kind of step back and reintroduce you to the listeners, but also really bring everyone up to speed with all that is going on in the world of COH. So, um, I guess the best place to start, uh, you're, you're very open about your sobriety uh, on the show and, and that kind of being a part of your journey, really being a massive part of your journey, but take us through kind of just the spark notes of that, you know, what, what it is that kind of drove you into being in a place where you became sober, how long you've been sober, what, what that journey's been like for you. Sure. So, uh, apologies to anyone who's heard this in the past, but, but my, this whole thing, you know, when I present what consequence of habit is, uh, and this goes for even a lot of the guests, I would start off with this, this idea of, um, I think, I think the stoic quote is like, what's in the way becomes the way or, or the, the, uh, the book, um, the obstacle is the way. So, so for me, what started off is this thing that was an issue for me, uh, and and a lot of people uh, around uh, distraction, escape. Um, my avenue was was alcohol. So there there came a point in my life where something was going to have to give. Like there were signs in my life that that uh, I needed to make a change. So in two thousand nineteen, uh, I kind of came to this crossroads. 
And I, and I come from a long line of drinkers. Um, it's been a big thing in my family for, for quite a long time. And uh, so it was this huge obstacle uh, for me. And, and I made this choice to, to, uh, to make some changes and, and kind of went through that process for me. That was a 12 step. And then about a year into that is when consequence, I have it as a, as, as a, well, as a podcast, but just getting back to your question is it was 2019 is when um, I, I, I decided to make that change. So uh, in February, I, it was the, my, my three-year mark. Well, congrats, man. That's big. That's a, and Thanks. I know that that's, um, you know, every day is a, is an increment and a step forward, but I know once you start getting into the years that that's, that's big. Yeah. It's, I don't think, think about near as much anymore. Um, and the more I look into it, and it's, it's something we could probably get into in a little bit, the more I look into it, like I said, just alcohol is my avenue. Everyone's got their own. And then, and that's always one of the tell, tell signs. Like if I'm going through a hard time, what was easy yesterday may be a little harder as um, I'm going to pick up my athletic brewing or, or, or something at, and it happens to be at a, at a liquor store and you know, I'm passing the same aisles and uh, I'm looking at, at certain things and, and as, as a disclaimer, like that doesn't work for everybody. Some people will, right. but, but for me it, it works, but there are times I pass them and I go, Oh yeah, I remember that quick escape uh, lever where I could just pull that and, and, kind of disappear, but, um, uh, yeah, I, it doesn't, it doesn't cross my mind near as much as, as it did in the beginning. It, to your, uh, I was, as you started talking, I was sitting here and I'm looking at, I've got a whole bunch of the, uh, daily stoic coins sitting here on my oh, desk. Cool. And I, I grabbed my obstacle is the way one. Cause the, I was, as you were reading the quote, I was thinking the, what they have on the back of the coin is the impediment to action advances action, yeah. what stands in the way becomes the way. And I, I mean, there is, for just a few words, there's so much volume spoken within that. Right. And it resonates across so many levels. And one of the things that I, when you and I first met, when I, when I had you on my podcast, um, there's this consequence of habit to me, almost at the surface sounds like a positive thing, right? Like here's the consequence of these, of these, uh, these habits that we have in our lives, these good things. I mean, and maybe that's the Instagram filter through which we look at everything and whatnot, but um, as you dig in, as you listen to your episodes, as you get to know you and your guests and whatever, there's, it, it becomes quickly apparent that really what we're angling for here is the, um, the consequences of those obstacles, right. Of those things that have gotten in our way that can be these breakpoints for us. So talk a little bit about the evolution of consequence of habit. Why, maybe why the name kind of why it, what it was that felt like you needed to start it um, from the podcast. And then we'll work our way through to kind of where it is uh, today. Man, that's a, that's a good question. Cause it was a, honestly, the, the, it was a bit of a blur. Now we're going by 2019, uh, get sober 2020. You know, there was, there was a time frame, and I've said it on here before where I was, I was hosting a podcast for, for an, a, a company and that had gone away. So I'm fairly early in sobriety and you're isolated, right? Uh, COVID for the most part. And, and I don't know, I, what drove me to, towards sobriety was consequences. And it wasn't even the ones that had happened already. It was the ones that I knew were going to happen if I continued down a certain path, right? So you, you can see them, and I've, I've said it before, it's, it's like a, a train wreck happening in slow motion. You can see this thing coming you can continue to go the direction you're going, or you can start to make changes. Um, and I, and so it was good and bad. I see some people doing the exact same thing. And then I see these people that, that have these, these habits where it, it's not instantaneous, but over time, these little, these little steps are taking and, and their life is, and they're from the outside, it's looking pretty good. So I, I messed around. I remember messing around with the name for a while. And this was one of the first solo things I'd ever done. Like I, I've done things before, but it was always partnered with somebody. So it was always like this, this back and forth of ideas. Uh, and, and this was one of the first times where I'm like, you know what, this name resonates with me, even though it's long, I kept misspelling consequence. <laughs> I'm glad to know I'm not the only one. 
<laughs> matter of fact, oh, this is a funny story. Uh, I secured the the URL for it, right? Except I spelled consequence wrong. So, um, it, <laughs> yeah, uh, that the URL I, I with the with the wrong spelling, I just got a notification was going to it was going to expire, and I was very upset because I didn't realize it was the wrong spelled one. So, it, so I was like, "What the fuck, man? What's I mean, I paid, I paid, and then I realized it was the one I." I I, uh, I don't know. To me, it just described, it was this open thing, good, bad, whatever your habits are, they're going to have a consequence. And then, you know, the whole point of, of examining somebody's, yeah, and I don't want to talk about 12 step, but anybody who examines their life and what they do on a regular basis will start to make the connections where a lot of times we're, we're not even conscious uh, of why we do the things we do what's the meaning behind it? Like, what are you, like, is it, if it's something getting back into to distraction, if it, are you, if, are you doing it because you're trying to distract yourself from something? Are you, are you not comfortable about something? Um, or on the positive side, like you may not realize you may not want to do it, but the feeling of afterwards, it's the same. It's, it, you know, it's the polar opposite. It's like pain and pleasure come from the same place in your brain. And sometimes we don't realize what seeking quick pleasure causes pain. And then vice versa, so, you know, subjecting ourselves to a controlled amount of discomfort or pain yeah. um, has, has a dopamine effect that's longer lasting and doesn't come with all the shame and all of the other things that go along with, um, uh, w- w- with, with the first thing I spoke about. So it's, it's gotta be, um, there's a, there's the vulnerability and the personal piece whenever you start something, right. And especially when you're doing it by yourself. Um, but taking it even another step further and starting something because of this vice, because of this flaw, right. Um, and, and putting yourself out there, not necessarily just to like put yourself out there and be like, Hey, Hey, look at me. Um, but really with the intention of helping others of serving others. And that serving is a word that service serving, it comes up so much time and time again, in your in your episodes. Um, and it's not just these guests you have on that are serving people. It's you, you are serving people by creating the space by driving these conversations. So kind of in that light, what has it been like watching this endeavor kind of grow beyond just you and just the impact for yourself. Did, was it something you like were consciously thinking about the impact that it was going to have? No, no. I mean, I, I would be, I would be lying if I listen. Anyone who jumps on a mic and talks about their own life and their own experiences, there, there is a, a, you know, there's a little bit. I don't know if voyeurism is the right word, but there's an there's this aspect of it where um, maybe you didn't get enough hugs and, and you're saying, "Look at me." <laughs> um, but it, it's, you're right. It is a, it's become a platform. Um, did I ever imagine that it would get to where it's gotten? Absolutely not. Matter of fact, I kept running out of things to say. And, and, you know, I was even apprehensive about doing this because I didn't want to just say the same things I've said in the very beginning. Uh, but it grew, it grew to a point where it was, <clears throat> excuse me, it was a place for other people to come on and tell their stories and, and people with, with, Unbelievable have lived through unbelievable things, good, bad. You know, when we talk about habits, that's a great thing is you'll never run out of material because right. we've all got them. Some are good, some are bad. And, and uh, yeah, and, and it's been an amazing, it's been, that's been a, an amazing experience. And I do, I struggle sometimes with um, talking about just stuff I want to talk about or, uh, you know, where is it, is this just about me? And even when it came to the nonprofit, I'm like, oh man, how can I ask? for donations when, you know, there's things on here that maybe, I don't know, it's a, it's a really complicated uh, thing, but, but it has been very, it's been one of the most rewarding things uh, in my life to, to sit back and see this thing grow. And to be honest with you, as a, uh, as a nonprofit grow beyond me with the hopes of someday, like it's, it's consequence I have as a name I came up with and, and helped build something, but it's beyond that. It's beyond me. You know, I'm, I'm not involved. I'm gone or whatever, but the, the idea of it will continue. Is there, um, 
do you feel a burden within that at all? Like, do you feel like now that you've like kind of set the ship, you know, on its course or at least to sail that like you got to keep it afloat now or how do you? 100%. 100%. Um, I mean, it's one I accept, uh, but you know, yeah, it can be stressful at times. Yeah. Yeah. It, and it's not as, well, there's, so there's a couple of things there. There's in, in that question, there is, are you living up to the idea of the consequence of habit? And the answer is sometimes no. Um, s- sometimes yes. And then there's the idea of, are you, is this thing that you've created going to grow? Are you going to get people to understand what your vision is, invest in your, your vision um, and follow through with the plans? Because it's very easy to be on this mic and talking about, Hey, we're going to do this, this, and this. But at the end of the day, like that should actually, there has to be a lot of planning and there's a lot of logistics and it all costs money, all of it. And, you know, it's not like I jumped from my, my, my job as a, a, as an executive director of another nonprofit. So like I'm all this shit, man, just, you know, I'm just learning on the fly. Just learning like, this go. Yeah. <laughs> and nonprofits, man, there is a, for, for anybody who's never worked in one. Um, and I, I'm fortunate enough to be speaking from the, the standpoint of having served in a nonprofit. Um, there's so much beauty and uh, just learning that comes within that. And I, it's a, it's an experience. I, that shaped me to who I am today still after working for one for five years and five, six years. And um, it's something I would never trade. And I would encourage anybody to at some point try to work with for, even if it's just volunteering, I mean, there's such benefit that comes out of it, but to <laughs> the learning curve on it, man, it, there's so much, there's so much to take in. And then on top of it being a business, an entity thing, whatever that you're trying to make survive, you you then have that extra burden of the people that you are serving. You are impacting, be it one person, four dogs, a hundred people, whatever it may be. There isn't you. There are people who become dependent upon the service that you're giving. You know, and okay. I I commend you for that because I that I having started a couple of businesses, it's one thing when it's your own thing, but when you are truly impacting other people, I that's very commendable. I, I appreciate that. And honestly, I think ignorance was, was a gift. <laughs> yeah. but on, at, fir- at first it was a gift. Cause it's like, <laughs> this is my, my first two board members. Um, now they are 100, they're more, way more qualified than me. Amazing people. And they, you know, they listen to the podcast. They knew, they knew me from the podcast and I'm friends with them. I actually, through, through, through blood, their family as well. And I hit them up. I'm like, Hey, I'm going to do a nonprofit. I need your social security number because you're about to be a, a board member. <laughs> and they're like, cool. And, and then like, you know, five minutes, like, wait, like, wait, what, what, what is this about? And, and that's how it sparked it. And to be honest with you, I had, I went into this completely blind. I'm like, I filled up paperwork took some money to get the, the, uh, the, you know, some of the stuff filled out. And at this point we didn't have the, the 501 C three because that's a whole nother animals. Anyone who's ever tried to get one of those, that's a real pain in the ass. Um, but to go through all of that stuff, if I had known how much went into it and, and then, you know, my, my wife, thank God we were joking around the other day that, man, she's been on a ride because I'll pick something you know, whether I was doing stand-up comedy, like whatever it is, um, um, she's, she's going on a ride. What like, <laughs> and when it came to this, um, she's been insanely supportive and, and, and allowed me, when I say allowed, I mean that this is a, a joint decision, you know, it's these to start something costs thousands and thousands of dollars, um, to, for, for, for the nonprofits. And then even the podcast, it's not a huge expense, but it's money. Like it costs money. Yeah. Um, so yeah, she's definitely been ride or die when it comes to, 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 to all this going on. Well, that's a huge piece of it, man. That the teamwork you put around, or excuse me, the team that you, you build around yourself in any endeavor, um, matters so much. And especially I think as you taking it back to the habits, back to the consequences, you know, when they are these obstacles, when they are these things to know that you're not ever going through these things truly by yourself. You may be the one putting the action in, but knowing you've got that support, that love, that team, whatever around you, I mean, it's, 
That's huge. And, that, and that's something you guys are now providing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that was one of the biggest shocks to me when people that, uh, and you, you probably, you, you might've felt this too. When you, when you go to do a podcast and you have a guest that you couldn't believe said yes, and they're going right. to come on and they're going <laughs> to, and they're going to, they're going to tell their story. Well, that was, that was when, when, when my board members agreed. And then I remember having this conversation with my wife, like, no, no, this is real now. Like there's people that are looking like you started this, like there has to be a follow through. There has to, all these things all have to happen. And then when certain people would, would say yes, and, and um, I see your vision and I want to be part of this. Uh, yeah. That was like, that was that there was some weight to that. And it's like, Oh, all right. All right. Wait, like, this isn't just this thing you do in your basement. Like we have to, we have to put this into motion and, 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 you know, make this thing at whatever, however it's going to play out, whatever mistakes can be made. Um, but, but, but we have to move forward. Well, talk about that motion. Talk about that piece a little bit. You guys have now gotten to where you're offering some pro different programs. You guys just completed one. We're recording this on what, April 21st. You guys had something back. I think it was April 5th. It was kind of like your first right. official in-person thing. Yeah. So for, those who may have heard a little bit about it through the podcast or seen online, talk a little bit about the programs you guys are offering and then maybe, you know, what's coming ahead program wise sure. over the next couple of months. All right. So I, I, you know, I, and maybe I, the real first program, so we did a plugging event last fall and this was yeah. right around, um, uh, this was, I think we had some rain delays and, and everything going on, but, but I, we did it. Um, on, on Halloween. And the idea behind that is getting into the habits. It's, it's getting yourself outside. Uh, plugging is either jogging, running, or biking, or uh, just some mode of transportation outside. And you're picking up trash at the same time. So the, the idea is you've got this habit that you're outside being healthy, moving, doing something for yourself, but, uh, but at the same time, being involved in something bigger than you. And when that's the service work side. Um, and that was kind of our first, it was a great, I, I, I counted it as a success because we had people show up, people did it. Um, we learned a lot. Uh, and then uh, anyone who listens to this knows that the, the veteran, the first community, the uh, first responder community is near and dear to my heart because that's where I come from. I know those communities. I, I, I feel like I do. And uh, so we, we want to do uh, an event for them. So we had a, a mindfulness meditation, a movement uh, workshop where, where retired Navy SEAL uh, John McCaskill and Dr. Teresa Larson, who's a Marine veteran, uh, came out to Dover, not on not right on Dover Air Force Base, but just off base. And we did something for, for airmen and first responders. And yeah, that was that was our first one. Like we had to fly people in, right? We had to put people in a hotel. Like there was a lot of logistics that went into that. We had, to get things, people, man. <laughs> we had to get people to show up to, to get people to show up at something on their days off or like this was on a Tuesday. Um, so this, that was one of the biggest lessons I learned in that and, and is getting this support from the local community. You know, like I'll tell you what, and there was a, like the day before we were hoping to have 75 people there. I got a bunch of emails, people saying they couldn't come. I had like, I'd be lucky if 20 people were going to come and I made some phone calls and like within a very short period of time, a ton of people signed up. Um, I shouldn't say a ton people signed up and, yeah. and it's like, all right, this, this thing podcast isn't going to cut it. I need like these, lo these local people that, to, to believe in this. And uh, yeah, but during that event, man, I just sat back and watched uh, the presenters do their thing. And they were really good. And <laughs> Dude, there was just this massive feeling of uh, not just for me, but but this everyone who's been involved in this, anyone who's helped out with this in any way of, of just pride. And I'm like, God, man, this is why we're doing what we're doing. And this is just the beginning. Uh, we got some some other things coming. So. Um, so before yeah. you go, before sure. you go any further, talk specifically to that event, like what is it that you guys were providing to the people who came to the event? Like, what is it that you were actually doing for those who were there? All right. So it, this stems from my experiences, my experience of, of being in the military, which is way different than people that are in the military now, right? They've right. been in for 20 something years. 
the idea of being a first responder is you deal with a lot of stress. Uh, people deal with trauma and they all have tools on how they do that. Uh, the tools, a lot of times that are promoted within those communities work short term. They do not serve them for, for a uh, long term specifically if those people are by themselves too, right? Like if you're, you're what they call choir practice. If you're meeting for choir practice in the morning and boozing it, boozing it up with your, your, um, you know, your brothers and sisters that, that work with you, th that is a way to relieve stress short term. But if that's what your crutch is, if that's how you do it from that point on, I'm not a fortune teller, but I'm going to say it's probably not going to work out great for you. Um, so the idea of this was uh, to teach people alternative ways uh, to dealing with stress and trauma and, and, and then to make that mind body connection, understanding that, um, you know, you're, all of these things manifest themselves both mentally and physically. And, and, but there's tools, there's, there's things we can learn to kind of help you work through some of these things. And, uh, that one, I mean, Dr. Truth is awesome. She was awesome with the movement stuff. Uh, what we really learn is how, stiff and <laughs> how much we are not moving properly. Uh, and then, and then John's, uh, uh, segment. I mean, the fact everyone knows the Murph challenge, um, John was part of that, that mission. And he was actually on the radio with, with, uh, I think it was Lieutenant Murphy when, when, when he, when he was killed. So to drive down to Delaware, uh, down to Dover and have him say last time I was here was with the I was escorting the bodies of, of these oh, two. Wow. So uh, that brought, that brought a, a, a like a street cred, not the written, it doesn't even do it justice, but, but people could hear that and realize like this person's seen and done a lot and, and he's suffered from it. So mm -hmm. it's okay if I'm suffering, I'm, um, it's okay. You know, and then he led us through his meditation and to have, uh, I joked around afterwards and I, and I felt like it was a bad joke and I shouldn't have said it, but it was, I had a retired Navy SEAL commander leading a meditation to a bunch of people in, in military uniforms and like 5'11 pants with knives. And, and, and I, <laughs> I opened my eyes throughout it and there's an entire room of, of men and women. They're sitting there meditating. And uh, I made a joke of like, I'm in a bizarro world, but I love it. And I really did. I mean, I meant it. it I just like, I, I've, I think there needs to be more of that. Like there's this idea when I was a kid, I'm 46, this idea of like people who meditated like, Set crisscrossed applesauce yeah, and smelled, smelled like patchouli oil and 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 smoked weed. Where, as if those tools, not talking about all of those, but but that you know the, the mindfulness and the meditation, there it doesn't care if you're wearing five eleven pants. It works. It's normalizing it. It's, it's opening what, the conversation to it. You know, one of the other shows that I'm I'm super proud to work with is um, another podcast called the Turning on the Light Podcast, and it's one I've been telling you I want to get you as a guest on with with sure. Eric Bell. And it, the whole premise of that conversation, that podcast is to have a conversation around mental health, to destigmatize, to talk about. It. I mean, there are, we have, you said it really well. We've had people fighting wars for 20 years, man. There's a lot of consequences to that, right? right? And, and the habits that have been formed along the way to cope with it may not be the best, but to, we can't get anywhere if we don't talk about it. You know, if there's not people trying to, support it to bring attention to it so again i mean it's really cool to see you guys putting rubber to the road here and making an impact on people's lives yeah yeah i am I'm, I'm excited to see the direction it goes um i was extremely proud but i i don't you know it's almost like training for an event mm -hmm. like this was our first one like you, you spend so much time and then it's over and it does not take very long. All right, like what's next? Right. Let's get, like let's get the next thing going. Uh, and and again, the the more people I talk to, you, you know, you start to realize you you see these patterns of just different ways people escape. What the ways we do it, and some are healthy and some are not, and most of them are not. And we have more. There are more ways to escape now than there ever have been in the history of time. Uh, so it's just a slippery slope and, and I'm definitely subject to it myself, but, but I think um, looking at those and, and trying to figure out, and I think some of this stuff is going to happen. It's going to, 
you know, all, as these ideas just come out and then these programs go, we're going to see the ones that work, have the most impact, and, and then we'll start steering it in those directions. But um, yeah, I'm excited for it. So do you guys have your next event, your next program planned? Are you guys working on it behind the scenes? What's what's coming up? So we got a couple of things going on. Um, one, we started a monthly virtual meeting. So that anyone can find that from the website and we, we bring in a guest host every time. And they're so it could be around sleep, uh, diet. Uh, I said, we're, we're one of the things our mission. Well, actually I didn't say our mission statement is to empower the individuals and the, and the community by bringing awareness to the impact that uh, habits have on our, our mental health success in the environment. So there's always gonna be an environmental side. So we had uh, Jeff foot who, uh, was a head of sustainability for Coca-Cola. He came on, did something about sustainability. We've had Chris Norris, who is just, God, I mean, I, we wouldn't be where we are without him. Um, he's come on and, and he's, a, he's a board member and he did something on mindfulness and meditation. Um, we've had people come on and talk about yoga. We're, we're going to have some new, uh, nutritionists come on here soon. So that's always going to be part of it. It's a monthly meeting. Anyone's more than welcome to join. You just go to the website at consequenceofhabit.org, sign up, and we'll send you the Zoom link. Um, we have Team Consequence of Habit, which is in formation now. Like that's, if anyone out here is, is or out there is, hears this and, and knows of a way to help support this, we would love your feedback. So uh, our next guest on the virtual meeting is a guy named Blue Robinson. He started something called Addict to Athlete. And we were, we're going to try and mirror something along those lines that it's for, it's for people who have touched both sides of the habit spectrum. So maybe you've suffered in your life with some of your habits, whatever that looks like. Um, but now you're doing, you've, you've changed your turn, your life around, and now you're doing something positive. Well, if it's something to do with athletics, whether it's a race, uh, it could be running, biking, can you, I don't care what it is, sure. act, honestly, we want to help support you. So if that's gear, that's, that's shoes, that's entry fees, uh, whatever that looks like. So that's really what we're trying to, we're doing a lot of fundraising for now. Very cool. Uh, yeah. And then our plugging, our next blogging event kicks off tomorrow on earth day. Uh, we're looking for 10,000. We're going big this year. 10,000 pounds of trash is what we, uh, we want to pick up through kicking off on earth day. And that's going to go to the end of the year. And I was like, man, to the end of the year, um, one is 10,000 pounds. It's a lot. It's going to take a while. And then two, the, the idea is like, well, let's not just do it on one day. Yeah. Let's let's and make it a theme. I would make it a theme, man. Let's get this party going. And, and I would love at the end of the year to be able to go, Hey, not only is this much trash we, we collected, but look how many people got outside. Look how many people covered. This is the distance we covered, whether it be hiking, biking, running, whatever it is. Uh, I mean that collectively, dude, that would be, that would blow my mind. I would love it. I wrote down this Epictetus quote um, the other day, just kind of thinking about us doing this recording, whatever. And um, it was from a, from a, I pulled it out of a daily stoic book, but um, he said, but what does Socrates say? Just as one person delights in improving his farm and another, his horse. So I delight in attending to my own improvement day by day. And I mean, that's it, man. It's like, we could, you could focus on earth day one day, or we yeah. can do it every day. We can make it that habit. We can work on that, you know, and, and uh, I think that's super cool. I love that you guys are yeah. looking at it from a different perspective a little bit. Yeah, I, I think so. And it's, it's, been, that's been fun. So I get to present that to REI, uh, a big REI store near us. Like cool. they, they brought me in. Oh yeah. They brought me in before the, the, the day started on a Sunday and gave me like half an hour to present this. And now they're competing against other REI stores. Um, we've got a, another store that we're hoping to, to get involved in that little competition. And, and again, going back to athletic brewing, those guys, uh, they stand behind that. I threw their logo on there and they were cool with it. They're going to help promote it. So there's, yeah, there's, I think it's, I think it's nothing but a positive thing. I think good things will come from it. We're going to take a pause right here to talk about the Patriot Fund. Patriot Fund is a 501c3 nonprofit benefiting the veteran community. So whether you're active duty, guard, reserve, a veteran, or the family of any of the above, these guys have been financially supporting other nonprofits to bring amazing things to these communities uh, to include Consequence of Habit. So please check them out at thepatriotfund.org. So what we're asking people to do is, is you don't have to weigh, if you fill up a bag, we're going to put an arbitrary number of 15 pounds on that bag. Cool. Um, yeah. And, and so if you, you send us a picture with, with a full bag, that's going to, that's, we're going to add it to the, to the tally and, and, 
Uh, if you post something, just just tag us on it, and we'll um, we'll we'll get all that stuff added up. A lot of people they they say the same thing. They go, "Hey, where I hike, it's really nice. There's not a lot of trash, and and that may be, but." Uh, when you start picking it up, the trash, you'll realize how much more trash there, there yeah. actually is. And then I challenge people like in a safe manner. Uh, if, if you're, if it's near a roadway, obviously wear some type of reflective gear. Uh, don't be picking up needles or something like that. But, uh, but, but if you can do it safely in, in an area that needs it badly, uh, then why not? I mean, it may not be the most, the best place to hike or, or whatever, but, but the impact that you're going to have as far as picking up trash is, is a lot more than you're going to get it to your, your pristine state park where you go every time. Yeah, absolutely. So man, as we kind of move towards the, the last piece of this conversation here, um, I want to put kind of the, our, uh, you know, crystal ball futuristic spin on all sure. of this. So speaking first for you, JT, what are, what are some goals that you have for yourself? in the future as that are you, that you're working on as a person every day? What are, what is, what are some of those? Oh, uh, I, I went back to the, the, the following through of being authentic to even the brand of what we're trying to do. And I would, I would say like living up to that as much as possible. You know, it's one thing to talk about this stuff all the time, but if, you know, I, I compared it to like reading, uh, uh, the atomic habit twice, but not implementing any of the shit into my life. That's like, what are you doing? So, and that just, that brings back some of the same feelings of pretending I had all my shit together before when I was drinking, but, but knowing, knowing the truth. Right. So, uh, being authentic, uh, to what we're trying to do, living that, not just talking about it. Um, it's probably one of my biggest. And, and that goes back to just doing what I know I need to be doing. And that's, uh, that's basic stuff. That's exercise. That's taking a moment um, to do the med- meditations that I need to do. And for me, that's breath work. That's, that's more of like a Wim Hof. That's just what works for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I would say those are the, are probably the, the things that, that, kind of eat at me if I'm going to have like be brutally honest with myself those are the things that like dude you're you're not you're not falling through do what you got to do and when I do that I did I feel way better yeah no I think it's good I think you know it's one of those things that again kind of with the purpose of this that um none of us have our shit together right we're all working on it right (laughs) right day every day and and sometimes you know it kind of goes to the atomic habits piece like it's really easy you were talking about this in your episode with Tony Nash it's really easy to um, go head over heels in this self-improvement, self-growth piece, right? There's yeah. so many podcasts about it. There's so many books, about. It. I'm staring at a bookshelf full of books about it, you know, and I've read almost all of them in some way, shape or form, right? And but sometimes it's in one ear and out the other, you know, or it's, it becomes to where you feel like you're failing because you can't work out, meditate, eat clean, get eight hours of sleep you know, journal, do all of the things, but so you have to reevaluate and you have to go, all right, I can do a couple of these things every day. You know, maybe this is what I'm doing in this season of my life. And I think within those habits that we form, you know, it's even the healthy ones can become self-destructive, right? Even like running to an extent can be a bad thing. If that becomes your therapy so much so that if you don't do it, you're not in a good place. Right. Um, yeah. So yeah. It's, 100%. it's interesting. I, I'm, I'm glad to hear you answer the way that you or I'm glad, I'm glad that you shared that answer the way in which you did, because, um, you know, I think as, as you position yourself in this, with this podcast and with this nonprofit to be delivering these messages, you're not speaking to anybody from up on a pedestal. You're speaking as a part of the crowd, right? <laughs> it's, it is very much you on the journey with everyone else. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm very careful about that to never come across like I have it figured out. Yeah. Uh, and I wasn't insinuating because, that you, that you, no, 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 I, I didn't, no, I didn't, I didn't take it. I, I didn't take it that way. I'm just hypersensitive to that uh, of, of letting people know that. Yeah. No, I'm, I, 
and that's why it's talking about being authentic. And, and there are, I, like, I know myself, and I know the days that I sat on my phone playing a video game or something for for two hours, and how that makes me feel, yeah. um, just personally. And then and then I, I add on. You talk about is there? Um, do you feel any pressure? Yeah, and that's okay. Uh, but but just even for myself, I realize I'm not falling through. There's things. I, there's other things. I don't have to be hyper productive, but I don't need to like waste like time. That's the thing. Like when I started this thing, I think like we got one fucking shot at this, man. Yeah. And, and I unfortunately lost a, a friend of mine just, I mean, I was at a funeral yesterday and it was a, um, it's just such a reminder, man. Like it's, it's easy to remember those, that in those moments, but it's those moments when um, you try, try to make those things stick. Like, what, what are you doing? What are you doing with yourself? How does it make you feel? Are you are, like, what are you providing for others? What are you providing for yourself? Um, I promise you spend all day on your phone. You're going to feel like shit. I'm, I've, I've done it a thousand times. I'm here to tell you there's other things we could be doing. Yeah. Uh, so it, it, it goes a little to the, uh, the momentum Mori piece, right? Like, yeah, but, I mean, we, we, this is what we've, this is the shot we have. You never know what tomorrow brings. Um, but all we can do is work for it, you know, work towards it. And yeah. so we're all, we're all going to die. <laughs> there's no, no, uh, no getting around that. So, um, uh, kind of last shot here on this stuff, hearing some of your goals, what are some of the goals that you have for consequence of habit? Let's, and you can, you can do goals for tomorrow goals for five years goals for where you see this thing in 10 years. Kind of what's the, what's your, what's your vision? Where do you see this thing going? Uh, there's, so there's a couple avenues of this. All right. My, my long-term goal would this, there would be chapters. This would not just be a Stanley. So we're out of Delaware. There would be chapters across the country. I think one of the benefits of doing this as a podcast first is we have a reach, right? We have, I mean, we've been, I think like 70 something countries. So we have this reach of being in a bunch of different places. Um, and then the other thing I've really learned from this is like, I'm not alone <laughs> in, in like worrying about my habits and, and the direction <laughs> we can all improve them. Right. Uh, and so I, I would love this, this, I have this idea of these chapters of, of like-minded people that are, are connected through, through a shared purpose and challenge, um, just working towards a better version of themselves. So um, that is the long-term goal. Uh, the short term is just to follow through and, and it's to follow through on the programs we have so coming up. And, and one of the things I've, I failed to mention is, you know, we have this goal of, of, of planting so many trees this year. Like we, we, we have these, these, these goals, but, and, and this isn't a pitch just to, to trying to raise money. It's not what I realize is part of being a, being part of a nonprofit is it all takes money. So I like this this process of learning for myself how that works, how to make that happen. So all of these things actually come to fruition, and they're not just uh, they're not just words. Yeah. So it does take money, and you guys are doing good work. Um, and obviously, all this stuff will be in the show notes as it is week over week, but. Um, you know, people being able to get involved to give, what's the, what are the best ways for people to support the organization? Well, there's a couple of ways. So if you just, if you want to, not just, if you want to give and support us uh, financially, that is, uh, that's what keeps the, 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 the lights on and, and the programs going. And that can be done a couple different ways, but uh, I would just, I would, I would direct people to the website and from there there's, you don't have to look very hard to be a bunch of donate buttons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and then volunteers, if people want to volunteer and, and be part of this, I'd say the easiest way is just uh, start up, like to get involved with the blog event, post about it, talk about it. Like uh, I think as this thing grows, as the word of mouth grows, the more people that, that, that hear the title of this and they ponder on it for, for more than a second, they're like, at first, like consequent, what? wait a minute. Oh, that's yeah, I like that. Like, and then they start living that stuff out, and then it's just the word of mouth. Um, and I, I think as that grows, this this whole thing is going to grow. Like we were joking around uh, yesterday. My wife and I were talking about like we we saw a guy we thought were wearing was wearing one of our one of the consequences of having t shirts, and it wasn't. I said, but that day's coming. We're going to see one in the wild. Yeah, at some point, yeah, we're going to see one. 
no and you guys will and i think the um i i think it's really cool to see just the passion that you have for this the genuineness you have for this you know i think um it's it's easy to kind of along the podcast line we were talking it it's easy to grab a mic it's easy to talk about your life to do whatever it's a whole other thing to be vulnerable about it and then to actually put it into action whether or not you achieve that every day whether or not some days you still get on your phone and do something stupid or whatever yeah. it may be you know for whatever that is for anyone um but to be that inspiration to be that touch point for people uh you know the the world needs it man so i i am uh it's it's an absolute honor to to get to know you and to have been a little bit part of this journey with you guys and i am uh, really excited to continue to see where this thing goes. You guys are are doing great work, man. I appreciate it, Anthony. And I've told you this before, but there's not many people. The podcast world is a crazy world. There are some great people, but there's some kooky people out there at the same time. And there's a couple of people I've really latched onto along the way. Obviously, we're, uh, you know, I've I've trusted you as far as the the producing and anyone else. This will be in the show notes. Anyone who 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 has a podcast that wants to be, um, wants an amazing producer there you're, he's hosting this show. So we'll make sure that that's in there as well. Um, so I appreciate you kind of, uh, befriending me on this and having me on your podcast and, and I'm, I'm excited to see the direction this whole thing goes. Yeah. Me too, brother. Um, all right, man. Well, any, anything else we're missing here takeaway wise for, for the listeners of, uh, who you are and what you guys are doing or have we, uh, we covered it all for today. <laughs> we did it. Uh, I, I thank you very much for doing this. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Like I said, there wasn't, there's not many people I trusted to, to be part of this and, and be on the, on this side of the mic for, for the consequence of having a show. And, and you definitely won. So I, Anthony, I appreciate it. Absolutely. Bro. Everybody that's wrap. Like always. Thanks again for checking this out. This show is brought to you by the team here at consequence of habit. And is an arm of our 501c3 nonprofit. The show is produced and edited by the one and only Anthony Palmer. And is part of the Palm Tree Pod Company network of podcasts. That's it. I'll catch you guys next week.